are the proud hills of the state of Virginia in the springtime of 1956. Springtime, beckoning to a small boy, urging him to wander with the wind, to the farm perhaps, over the pasture fence to catch a calf. Not an easy thing, because after all, a calf's a youngster like himself. Ride him? Sure. Well, what's a day without a little rough and tumble? When a boy needs comfort, there's always home and mother and father. This is the world of Randy Kerr of Oakton, Virginia. Typical, except for one thing. Randy was the first child to receive an injection of salt polio vaccine in the field trials in 1954. Much, however, had preceded this moment when Randy Kerr made history. In the all-out fight against polio led by the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, there were many years of struggle and heartbreak. Parents lived in fear of polio's sudden attack and the tragic aftermath. Thousands upon thousands of children and adults fell prey to the crippler. March of Dimes funds were needed everywhere, needed desperately by patients, needed by an army of scientists who searched for a preventive. Then in 1954, a vaccine to prevent paralytic polio developed by Dr. Jonas Salk, a grantee of the National Foundation, was tested in the largest field trials in medical history. Finally, April 12, 1955, Salk vaccine safe, effective. The next challenge, commercial production of the polio vaccine in quantity. A huge task, a complex process, all detailed in this book. It's officially called a protocol. Here, the manufacturer records every step in the production of one lot of vaccine. The first requirement, trained scientists and technicians. Their every action is important, starting with the scrub up. And the equipment they use gets its scrub up too. A scalding steam bath for 15 minutes. When it comes out, it's completely sterilized, ready for the big job ahead. Vital to the production of the vaccine are monkeys from the Far East, given the best of care. Meanwhile, another basic ingredient of the polio vaccine is being prepared, a rich, nourishing liquid called medium-199. Some 68 different elements go into medium-199. Each is carefully checked, weighed, and combined according to the formula. And when all is thoroughly blended, the medium is tested for absolute sterility. Why this elaborate preparation? Into medium 199 will go monkey kidney tissue, first carefully minced by hand. In these bottles, the monkey kidney tissue grows, getting its nourishment from the rich medium 199. For six days, the bottles rock, and the tissue grows. Then, because all the nourishment in the medium is exhausted, half is siphoned off to be replaced by fresh medium, but with a difference. The difference, a big one, is that here, for the first time, live poliovirus is planted in the medium. Three different strains of poliovirus are added. The completed vaccine will protect against all three types of paralytic polio. And once more, the bottles rock. In four days, the virus, so minute yet so lethal, multiplies 250 to 1,000 times. Another stage in the complex production of vaccine has been reached. The polio virus solution is ready for harvesting. The endless testing has now begun. A titration test. It measures the amount of live virus present in the solution. This test is made seven different times during production. Next, filtration, a vitally important process. First, the virus solution goes through these metal tubes containing porcelain filters. Then, through sheets of asbestos, to strain out all kidney tissue and remove any stray bacteria. 
more tests. Rabbits are inoculated to make sure that no bee virus, a dangerous but non-polio virus, is in the solution. Guinea pigs, too, receive injections to make certain that the solutions are free of tuberculosis bacilli. Finally, the climax of production, inactivation. The power of the polio virus to infect man will be utterly destroyed. The colorless pungent chemical formaldehyde will deal the deadly blow to the polio virus. For 66 hours, in a warm incubator room, the inactivation process continues. Then what remains can only do good, provide humans with protection from paralytic polio. A chapter ends. The enemy of man is now ready to become his servant. At every step of the way, checks and double checks. This technician is working on a tissue culture safety test. Double check on the complete inactivation of the virus. Four such tissue culture tests are conducted on every batch of vaccine. Behind this door, the final phase of production. It calls for a giant tank. Into it will go the three types of inactivated poliovirus solution, combined here for the first time. The solutions are first filtered on the way into the pooling tank and twice later. Additional chemicals complete and preserve the vaccine. Then the preparation is mixed for five hours. At the end of that time, the poliomyelitis vaccine is complete, but testing is not. Two animal tests are performed. One, on white mice injected with vaccine, is called the LCM test. And the live monkey potency test. Monkeys receive poliomyelitis vaccine, then are observed and examined to be sure the vaccine is potent enough to cause formation of polio-fighting antibodies in humans. More tests. A sterility test, the sixth of its kind, is performed. It takes time and infinite care. Only vaccine found completely free of bacteria is approved for the next step. That step is putting vaccine into bottles under completely sterile conditions. These are the bottles which finally will find their way to doctor's offices and clinics all over the country. Even as they reach the end of the production line, other tests are in progress and samples are sent to the government. No vaccine can leave the pharmaceutical house until all tests by the manufacturer and the government are completed satisfactorily. The protocol is finished then sent to the National Institutes of Health for government approval required by law. In Bethesda, Maryland, the National Institutes of Health is a vast center of medical progress, the main research arm of the United States Public Health Service. In the office of Dr. Roderick Murray, chief of the Division of Biologic Standards, the manufacturer's protocol is first reviewed. Then Dr. Murray summons two scientists from his staff. Each is given a copy of the protocol which he will study carefully, checking every process, every test for consistency. At the same time, another vital judgment is being made in the laboratories of the National Institutes of Health. Here a sample from every batch of vaccine is received. then subjected to a whole battery of complex scientific tests. A sterility test, confirming those of the manufacturer, is carried out. A 
a tissue culture test on the vaccine sample, again substantiating tests already made by the manufacturer. Living tissue is inoculated with poliomyelitis vaccine, incubated, then carefully examined. The monkey test, one of the most important tests. 20 monkeys are involved in the testing of every lot of vaccine, and each receives three injections from the manufacturer's sample. The purpose? Once again, to confirm the safety and effectiveness of the polio vaccine. These are just some of the painstaking review and testing procedures of the National Institutes of Health, each contributing to the final judgment and recommendation on every lot of vaccine. Once the Public Health Service authorizes its release, the polio vaccine can begin to protect American youngsters. In 1955, over 10 million children received one or more injections of self vaccine, including this boy, the president's own grandson, David Eisenhower. And now, like millions of boys and girls across the nation, David too is protected against paralytic polio, free to play and enjoy the delights of summertime with the president, his grandfather. From the United States Public Health Service, a report on these vaccinations in 1955 by the distinguished former Surgeon General, Dr. Leonard A. Sheely. As we enter the second year of wide-scale use of the Salk polio vaccine, it's my very pleasant duty to report to you the results of polio vaccinations to date. Public Health Service findings on the effectiveness of the vaccine add up to good news indeed. We had an especially good opportunity to study effectiveness last year. Here is a very simple chart which indicates how the vaccine worked during 1955. It is based on reports from 22 states and New York City among vaccinated children, as you can see. The attack rate for paralytic polio was only 6.3 per 100,000, while among the unvaccinated, the attack rate was 29.2 per 100,000, almost four times as high. The studies involved about eight and one half million children whose ages range from five to 11 years. Even though most of the vaccinated children had, had only one injection instead of the full dosage of three, the vaccine was found to be about 78% effective. Put in another way, the boys and girls who received at least one injection of vaccine had about four times as much protection as those without it. We can all be proud of the soft vaccine brought about by American scientists and American giving. We can all share in the hope that this victory will lead to many more in the years ahead. For maximum protection from paralytic polio, three inoculations. The second given not less than two weeks after the first. The third not less than seven months later. Your child or any member of your family eligible for polio vaccine in your community should be vaccinated now. Vaccination now will save lives from death or paralysis this year. Make use of increasing supplies of vaccine. Help your child grow up strong and straight, free from crippling polio. Youngsters like David Eisenhower, like polio pioneer Randy Kerr, are part of a bright new future. A future which will see the unconditional surrender of infantile paralysis. American homes and homes every class.